And I would have won the one, but I was given a dirty poll by NBC where they came up with a poll. It's true. Because I thought I was winning Florida by a lot. This is a dirty business, this politics. I used to think real estate was tough. Real estate is like babies, all right? <laughs> okay, this next one is another member of the cabinet, Dr. Ben Carson. But Dr. Ben Carson made the mistake of writing an autobiography. And I'm sure, you know, some of the sections that he wrote about sold more books because they were very interesting but they kind of came back to bite him on the campaign trail, didn't they, Corey? This is called the famous belt buckle speech. That's how we refer to it internally at the campaign, the famous belt buckle speech. Dodge, Fort Dodge, Iowa, I remember it so vividly. See, he, all he says to see is one frame, one twenty-eighth of a second, and he knows exactly what the speech is. I, I, I know it, and I'll tell you, after this is done, I'll tell you, this is the first day that we have Secret Service protection on the campaign. I'll tell you the backstory as soon as we see this. So he said he has pathological disease. Now, if you're pathological, there's no cure for that, folks. Okay? There's no cure for that. But if you're a child molester, there's no cure. They can't stop you. Pathological, there's no cure. Now, he said he was pathological. Okay. He took a knife, and he went after a friend, and he lunged, he lunged that knife into the stomach of his friends, but lo and behold, it hit the belt. It hit the belt, and the knife broke. Give me a break. people of Iowa. <laughs> How stupid are the people of the country to believe this crap? So here's the good news. He's now saying all of that stuff happened because otherwise he's a liar. So Carson, oh, the knife broke. There it is. Let me know. Oh. So what he's saying is that these series of events, and he goes into the bathroom for a couple of hours, and he comes out, and now he's religious. <laughs> Give me a break. Give me a break. It doesn't happen that way. It doesn't happen that way. And some people might not like it. Oh, that's not really nice what you say. Don't be fools. Don't be fools. What the hell have we come to? What have we come to? When we have to believe this kind of stuff, and we're going to put somebody in office who considers himself to have pathological disease, read the definition in a dictionary of pathological disease. And I'm not saying it. He said it about himself before he knew he was going to run for office. Corey, what you, that, that, that guy, that redheaded guy with the beard uh, off to his right, he, he looks very nervous, you know? I mean, he probably got briefed, like, saying, don't don't crack up or anything. So, so this is amazing. This is, this is literally the first day we have the privilege of having uh, U.S. Secret Service protection. So we can assign this uh, detail leader, whose name is Mark Habersat. He's a very serious guy. He's in charge of the detail for the nominee, the, the candidate at the time. And Mr. Trump loves feedback. So we get in the vehicle, and there's four of us that always ride in the car. So Mr. Trump sits behind the passenger side. Keith Schiller, who you saw throw Jorge Ramos out, sits behind the driver. Then I sit in the back, and Hope Hicks sits behind the candidate. And uh, we're, we're leaving this particular event, and Mr. Trump says to the detail leader who's in the front passenger seat, Hey, Mark, what did you think of my speech tonight? He said, Very good, sir. And he says, um, Any recommendations, suggestions, anything? Goes, uh, just one, sir. Uh, well, Mark, what is it? Right? And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy talking? Just drive this in the car. And he goes, sir, please don't encourage people to come up and stab you. I have to shoot them. <laughs> During this speech, he looks down, and there's like a 90-year-old guy, no, no disrespect, of course, and he says, hey, come on up and try and stab my belt. Right? <laughs> and Mark, the Secret Service guy, is like, I'm going to shoot the guy, sir. Please don't do that. And he goes, oh, Mark, he couldn't have even got the stairs. Don't worry about it. 
just the campaign. That's what we were. It was just the greatest thing. In the, time. the the next one we've got is we had a, again we had a million different choices here, and, and this is dealing with hecklers at the uh, speech. But I wanted.